Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech, and last summer I started a steampunk aquarium. I wanted to combine my two favorite things, and uh, it's been pretty challenging. Uh, a lot of the things that I started off trying to do just didn't work out, and so I put it aside until I could think about it a little bit more. Uh, I've come up with a better way to do this. Now, I always wanted to incorporate an aquaponics uh, element to this thing. One, because I think aquaponics are just really neat. And two, because uh, to be steampunk, it has to have this kind of like unusual, you know, it's from that period, but they're like a little bit ahead of their time in some ways. Mad science is what I like to call it. So um, I think aquaponics in that period of time probably would be pretty uh, unusual, uh, even though the concepts for this go back hundreds of thousands and thousands of years. So uh, without further ado, let's take a closer look at uh, my working model for the small aquaponic system. Okay, so uh, this is a relatively small, in fact it's a very small aquaponic system, and I wanted to start off really small because it'll be easier to decorate, it'll be easier to uh, put on a table or something like that so I don't have to incorporate a stand into this design. Um, I wanted it to be fairly compact because I want to put it in a window and the window light is going to grow the plants and uh, I'm going to incorporate some light and other things into here. I actually want to do a planted tank underneath and uh, there's going to be a porthole. I, want to, I was thinking about taking this and this will be uh, this will be encased in some wood and I'll have some, you know, some sort of hole in the front that you can see into the aquarium. Now you won't be able to see a lot into the aquarium, but um, I'm keeping it in a window, so I think encasing the rest of this where no light can get in, uh, except for what I put in there, will be a smart idea. It'll keep the algae down and make this a pretty low maintenance tank overall. Um, the water is gonna flow out of here and into this grow bed and because of the bell siphon, and I'm going to show you this in a second, the bell siphon, uh, the way it works is it'll let the water rise up to a point and then it'll start draining once it creates a siphon. The siphon will drain the water almost all the way to the bottom, it'll break the siphon and then the cycle starts over again. So the water will continually rise and fall inside of this container on top. As the water falls, of course, it drains back into the aquarium. So the idea is that uh, with aquaponics is you can grow vegetables uh, you can and uh, raise your fish in a pretty uh, pretty clean water. In fact, a lot of people in aquaponics claim that you never actually have to change the water. You only add more to it. It just keeps it that clean. The nitrates uh, in the state where it's wet and then dry, then wet and dry, get absorbed into these plants and also the ammonia and, the, and everything else. So. It should be like a really super efficient filter. Even if I didn't have plants in here, all this ceramic material, again, I'll show you in a second, all this ceramic material that's inside of here that the plants grow in uh, are very porous and probably would hold a great deal of beneficial bacteria inside of here. So the water rising and falling, giving the bacteria oxygen and then uh, the water would just provide a super filter, probably just in and of itself. But the idea is that the fish waste creates uh, plant food and the plants clean it up, send the water back in here, and uh, the fish has great clean water, the plants have all the food, and it's just a whole symbiotic system. And that's why I think it's fascinating. It's definitely scientific and interesting enough for a story. So uh, I've got my story from my steampunk aquarium and I'm ready to uh, show you how it works. So let's take a closer look at this bell siphon and uh, put some water in here and kind of show you how it cycles. The idea for this setup actually came from uh, originally when I had this. This is uh, my main aquarium and I was going to have this penetrate the front and then dump its water into this sump tank sort of and then pump it up into here and I thought well you know that's going to create a lot of problems as far as making a base that's sturdy enough to hold all that weight. So, because I, I really would like this to be a system you could like pick up if you drain, you know, the water out, you could pick up and just carry over to some, you know, to another location if I need to. So, uh, uh, I've actually made a couple of these. I have a. This is one of the prototype ones that I, I sort of abandoned, but you can you can see here 
essentially what it looks like empty. There'll be uh, a standpipe here and the water will elbow out. This elbow uh, helps create the siphon it's, and it's what held me up for so long. I, I did not think about it correctly, but this elbow really helps uh, the water fill up in here. And once the water completely fills the pipe, it'll suck it dry with the aid of the bell, which is uh, this little gizmo. Now this is just a cap. It's got what's, uh, what they call a snorkel right here. And the snorkel will provide air to the top of this when I want the siphon to break. And uh, what I do is I put that snorkel inside of this little cap like this. And I set it on top of the standpipe. And the water will rise until it starts to go over the standpipe. And it'll, it'll fill up that standpipe. And once that, stand, that pipe is full of water, it will create suction. And it will suck the water down all the way. Well, Pat, you know, the standpipe's way up here, but the water just fills up the entire chamber and it sucks all the way down to the bottom. And it can break here. I have sort of an emergency little cutout here, but more than likely what'll happen is as the water level goes below this cap, all the water's sucked out of the cap and then air is allowed to break the siphon inside. It creates a pressurized chamber. Basically low pressure forces the water down the pipe and it uses gravity. And uh, it looks like magic but it's very, very old, very old concept. Uh, they, the Greeks use siphons. Uh, the Romans use siphons. Siphons are ancient technology. More than, uh, more than a good enough reason for a time traveling journalist to uh, try it out. So the other element to this, uh, this top part is a gravel guard. Uh, I originally tried to make a gravel guard out of a couple of different things. Uh, this was part of the original design. Set my gravel guard up, but the gravel, um, this was of course imperfect. I was going to silicone it down once I got it just right, but it didn't have enough room. Uh, the gravel kept getting in there, messing things up. So um, I used some of this knitting material. I think uh, I'll show a close up. But I used some of this knitting material and I siliconed it into this uh, piece of Tupperware, which is actually uh, made by Sterilite. It's made for shoes. You can kind of store shoes in there. These are real cheap too. Uh, in the end, when this is all over, I'm going to do a price sheet so you know exactly what this, what something like this would cost to build. Uh, this aquarium was a two and a half gallon aquarium. And I got it from PetSmart. It was about $12.50. Uh, there will eventually be a canopy over the top. I haven't cut it out yet. I'm going to cut one out out of uh, acrylic. Uh, this is some flexible tubing that's used. Uh, you can get it at aquarium stores. It's used for filters. Uh, this tube here, <laughs> the tube that brings the water from the, uh, the pump here, is actually um, one from a water changer that just happened to fit. So I cut it. The... Um, the pump I got at Lowe's, which is a hardware store here, and uh, it's the smallest aquarium pump I could find. Or, well, it's not an aquarium pump, it's actually for fountains, and it'll take the water, it says two feet. If you look on these things, it'll tell you, uh, it'll tell you how far it can push the water up in the air, and that's kind of important. Uh, the first pump I used for this was actually the pump that came with the Fluval Edge, uh, uh, not the Fluval Edge, the, um, it came with the Fluval Flora. Uh, and I used that, that worked, worked pretty well to put, put it up, but it was so big that it took up too much space in here. So I really wanted something smaller, and this little pond pump is just working beautifully. Um, the water flows from the pond pump into this. This is a ceramic media. Looks a little bit like cat food, but it doesn't taste as good. I'm just kidding. Okay, and this grow material, let's see what's it called. Hydroton brand expanded clay grow media. Perfect for growing orchids, hydroponic growing, aquaponic grow beds, and even mixed with traditional soil for drainage. Um, the roundness of it helps the roots, keeps the roots, uh, gives them a nice little way to, to flow through this media. Um, what you want the, is the water to come up and then fall come up and fall and that kind of kind of soaks the roots but it doesn't keep them immersed in water 
So I don't have all the media in here. I only put part of it. I actually bought it uh, on eBay for not very much money. It was, uh, say like $25 or so for this big box of, of, of this stuff. And uh, it was the perfect amount for this little project. Uh, eventually, it, when it's finished, this is gonna be covered. And this is gonna be the grow area. I've got a little extra here for the roots to go, whatever. But uh, it's gonna be sort of like that. So you won't be seeing these things. Uh, all of this is gonna be faced also. So you're just gonna have that opening in the front and some other stuff I'll surprise you with later, uh, you know, all over and around it. Uh, this frame, incidentally, I put together with a glue gun and I will be disassembling it and, <laughs> and screwing it together, but it was sort of a, will this work kind of thing. Uh, so this is kind of my concept, concept frame. Uh, I think I could just pull the pull it apart and screw it back together and it should be no problem. Another fairly important concept that you need to understand is that if this is curved like so, it uh, fills up with water a lot faster and that's what creates the siphon. As soon as this tube is completely full of water, it will drain that tub all the way down. Now, having this uh, go down and then out is uh, what changed it for me. It, I had it going straight down. I had a very inconsistent siphon. It just did not work all the time. Uh, once I introduced this, this uh, slight turn up, which is very easy with these uh, pipes here, then uh, the siphon basically runs perfectly every single time. I have had zero problems since I introduced this part here. So that made a big difference for me. I hope it does for you. I could go on and on about aquaponics. It's a pretty huge subject in itself. And, uh, but what I'm gonna do instead is provide a link to some of my favorite videos about aquaponics to maybe explain a little further if you're really curious. Uh, aquaponics is used to grow lots and lots, of just a tremendous amount of food. Uh, traditionally what they would do is put tilapia or some sort of food fish as the fish medium and uh, then grow vegetables on top. So you can imagine the yield of food, both meat and vegetables that you could produce with a system like this if it's expanded into uh, like say a warehouse or something like that. Another beneficial thing is you can basically start a farm in a place where the ground is polluted or you know where you normally couldn't grow anything. So you could take an old warehouse in a city and turn it into a farm. So. That's some of the cool things about aquaponics that I really love and that's why I wanted to try a project like this. And um, I invite you to just check it out. There's just a lot to know about it and there's, it just, it's really interesting. Okay, so the next part that we're gonna talk about is the steampunk part that's gonna be in the next episode. I wanted to split the episode so if you're more interested in aquaponics but not so much the rest of the project, you could just watch this. Uh, we're gonna start making this look uh, really aesthetically pleasing. I've got uh, some wood to case this in. Uh, I've got my porthole. I've got a couple of other ideas. I've got some wooden uh, gears that are gonna do something. <laughs> I'm still working out some of the details. So uh, this is gonna be a pretty neat project. I can't wait to share it with you. And I hope you'll tune in to see it. Uh, also, I'm gonna include a history of aquariums. We're gonna talk about Victor aquariums of the Victorian age which uh, I'm kind of, I think it'll be an interesting subject and uh, kind of touch on some of the fiction behind this. My goal for the very last episode is actually to do a really short, short, I'm talking maybe five minutes of, uh, of me in costume. And this is a steampunk prop and like a little feature. So that's coming, that's coming. That'll be the end of this project. Uh, and also at the end, you're gonna have a parts list for all of this. So the dimensions of this frame, the type of aquariums I've used and uh, you know the the other components that I've used, you'll have a parts list for all of that. And uh, I'm gonna either film or photograph me putting it together so you'll have an idea how to do it yourself if you choose to make your own. And if you do make your own, I expect you to send me some photos. I'd love to see it or link a video and a comment. So uh, please let me know, I'd love to see them. So that's all I have for today. I'm gonna immediately start filming the next episode. Uh, as I continue to work on this, and I will talk to you soon. Have a great day.